Now look at a problem where the pulley is having some mass. So this is a pulley of mass capital M, radius capital R, moment of inertia capital I. A mass M1 is hanging here and a mass M2 is hanging here. Let us assume that M2 is greater than M1. Now, because M2 is greater than M1, M2 will accelerate down with, say, with an acceleration A, M1 will accelerate up with an acceleration A, and the pulley will have an angular acceleration alpha. Now, whenever the pulley has mass, tension on both sides of the pulley will be different. So, let us take the tension here as T1. So, this will also be T1, this will be T2, and the acceleration will be T2 here. Now we will draw the free bar diagram of M1. M1 G is acting down, tension T1 is acting up and the acceleration is upwards. So T1 minus M1 G equal to M1 A. This is the first equation. If you look at the free bar diagram of M2, M2 G is acting down, Tension T2 is acting up, acceleration is down, so M2 G is greater than T2, so M2 G minus T2 will be equal to M2 A. This is the equation number 2. These are simple equations that we learnt by showing Kepler's loss. Now we have to look at the pulley. For the pulley, tension T2 is acting this way, tension T1 is acting this way. The angular acceleration is in this direction. The net torque is due to T2 minus T1. So net torque is T2 minus T1 into R and that will be equal to I alpha. So we get T2 minus T1 equal to I alpha by R. Now there is no slipping. A equal to R alpha. So T2 minus T1 will be I A by R square. Since A equal to R alpha, no slipping. So the no slipping, A is equal to R alpha, so T2 minus T1 will be I A by R square. That is equation number 3. If you add all the three equations, adding 1, 2 and 3, all the tensions will vanish away. So finally you will be left with M2 minus M1 into G is equal to M1 plus M2 plus I by R square into A. Right? So A becomes M2 minus M1 into G by M1 plus M2 plus I by R square. So this is the extra term that you have got. If the pulley were massless, okay, this term would not have been there. Now the pulley is having mass, so I by R square has come in the denominator. If the pulley can be taken as a disc or a solid cylinder, in that case we can write I is equal to half M R square. So if pulley is taken as a disc or a solid cylinder, I will be half M R square. So that the acceleration becomes M2 minus M1 into G by M1 plus M2 plus capital M by 2. Half the mass of the pulley comes in the denominator. So this way we can solve problems involving pulleys with mass. The important thing to remember is that the tension on both sides of a pulley having mass are different.